what, what did you think of uh, of all the supplements that Joe Rogan said he took when he got because they were they were shitting all over him all over the news and everything saying that you know he was taking all this ridiculous stuff like deworm horse dewormer and all that stuff but you know he took a lot of stuff yeah well he took monoclonal antibodies and too, and yeah. nad mm -hmm. right oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. monoclonal Thank antibodies you, took nad so i'm of the opinion so i take uh you know i take zinc i take quercetin i take actually I have prescription vitamin d that i had on hand that i that i took for that and uh, prescription vitamin d. vitamin d yeah it's okay. actually prescription vitamin d2 so oh, okay. i'll take uh d2 and d3 quercetin zinc uh vitamin c um a couple other things here and there like uh i mean for lifting i take creatine monohydrate uh acetyl l-carnitine mm -hmm. i think is really good if you're on a ketogenic diet your body gets depleted in carnitine because carnitine transports is a part of the uh, fatty acid transporter so we tend to deplete it just because we're burning so much fat so i do that and then i took a lysine which an amino acid kind of can boost your immune system and then exogenous ketones so i think all of that and omega-3 fatty acids right. i think are, are right. good too so that's you know I, I tell people i don't really take supplements but i guess i just mentioned quite a, a lot few of vitamins that I take. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it's all you know I, I wake up in the morning and i set all the powders out i buy pretty much everything like bulk powders a lot of things uh, except you know of course vitamin d is not or zinc uh and then i scoop it on and just take it in the morning and then i'll put another in a shaker bottle some of the powders and i'll drink that like midday mm. or right before dinner or something uh, but I do think that there's a case for supplements. Uh, ivermectin's a little bit. Uh, I think there is some benefit. It needs to be studied more. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have we have cows, we have animals, we have tons of it on the farm. I didn't I didn't dig into the uh, <laughs> that my veterinary stash. Of, it's uh, it's funny ivermectin. that it's it's in the uh, the the heartworm stuff that you give dogs. Yeah, right. It's dog. like if you read the ingredients, it's actually in there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's in uh, you know right down there. Tractor supply. I think they were like <laughs> sold out of it. Uh, I I do think there is a case to be made. I think we just need to study it a little bit further. Yeah. Right. Uh, as you know, hydroxy uh, quinone and like the quinine derivatives too. I think we need to to look at them. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's funny. The, the the crazy weird thing about it is the vaccine is supposed to be for prevention, and this other stuff that yeah. you, that people are talking about is for treatment. Like treatment yeah. of it. Like once you already have it, like what's the best way to treat it? Yep. You know, and people in the hospitals say, wait until you need to be on it until you can't breathe and then you show up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my hunch is that in the very early case, maybe for uh, as a prophylactic measure, ivermectin could potentially be useful for mm -hmm. some people who are at high risk. This is what this is just kind of I'm just speculating here. And, and also potentially good to have on hand at the first sign of maybe getting it. Mm -hmm. So ivermectin. But I think the science is, just needs to catch up and support that. There's, mm -hmm. there's some science, but it's just not the large clinical trials that mm -hmm. we need. And the reason for that not being funded is sort of beyond the scope of this. Yeah, every <laughs> time I think I have it or I think I'm yeah. getting something or I feel something in my throat, I just stop eating for 24 yes, hours. Yeah. That's what I... Yeah. Just do, or I go in the sauna. I don't know if the sauna helps. That maybe that's stupid, but I go in the sauna. I sit in the sauna and I stop eating. I uh, yeah, it's actually that's two good points. So when you stop eating, then your body has less to deal with, right? So right. when we're eating, that's a big hit to our immune system because half of our immune system, more than half, is in our gut. So a lot of our immune cells and immune system function is dealing with the food that we're eating to neutralize. Because every time we eat, you know, if we eat a salad, if we eat a meal, there's a lot of toxic things that need to be neutralized. It's just part of, you know, digestion. And uh, not having to deal with that liberates the immune system is kind of like, you know, a bunch of little soldiers, right? So it liberates uh, a much bigger army for immune surveillance. And we can deal with uh, viruses that mm -hmm. are attacking us. And the sauna is kind of interesting because we know heat will kill COVID. Heat kills a lot of different viruses. So if you get into a sauna, uh, one thing that we did, I kind of, uh, I finally, we have a, we have an old spa jacuzzi thing uh, at our house. It's a big concrete old thing. And I, I fired it up after a couple of years. I finally got a heater for it and, uh, and I tinkered with it so I can push it beyond what it's supposed to. Right. So I can go to basically where it's boiling. So wow. <laughs> I get it. Under certain conditions, you know, I can get it above like what's considered like the safe limit. And I did, I heated it up 
to as much as possible and got in that thing. Uh, and I think that really helped me recover. I think, you know, that's, that's why we produce a fever, you know, a high, just boosting your body temperature a couple degrees makes right. you, uh, has an antiviral effect. It could hmm. decrease viral shedding. If we're in the process of viral replication, it can knock that down. Hmm. Um, and, uh, so I think that was smart to, to do what you're doing, you know, going into the sauna and, um, not you don't want to be pushing your body really hard with exercise because that could compromise your immune system right and actually feed the fire but uh but fasting and sauna are two good approaches are so have you done is there any studies that show the benefits of sauna combined with like ketogenic diet and and cold even like sauna people going in the sauna and then going in really cold water yeah like i'll do that sometimes i'll get in the sauna yeah. and i'll come right out and i'll jump in my pool like right now it's 65 in my pool or no yep. i'm sorry 55 in my pool yeah yeah same here i actually turned off our, our pool heater uh and then i'll use a sauna and jump in and yeah. now after yeah so that that's pretty cool uh we had ice you know we're in florida now but uh yeah we had ice over we had like half inch of ice over our cow watering stations and stuff so uh it's ridiculous. So yeah I, i'm a big advocate of that you know cold therapy mm -hmm. sauna uh so you're asking about ketogenic diet i think the ketogenic diet will enhance the adaptive responses associated mm. with sauna and i think uh like a lot of scenarios so we study therapeutic we study the ketogenic diet and then therapeutic ketosis induced with exogenous ketones we study that too in the context of extreme environments and have seen that the body is much more resilient and adaptable when it's in a state of ketosis. Okay. And uh, the reasons for that are reasons, you know, that we are investigating, but uh, I could probably come up with speculation as to why that's happening, but mm -hmm. we're still researching that. Cool. Well, Dom, thank you for doing this. That's two hours. Um, oh, wow. Where can the people listening and, and watching find more of your work, your website, everything that you're doing? Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. Give me this platform to speak. Uh, KetoNutrition.org. So KetoNutrition.org. Uh, we have a blog there. We're pretty active on that. We posted a blog this morning on bipolar disorder, actually, in ketosis. So uh, we are very interested in actually advancing areas of science that are underfunded. And one area is actually metabolic psychiatry. So we are going to uh, kind of have a meeting, a separate meeting at the Metabolic Health Summit. So if people are interested in attending an event where they have access to scientists, clinicians, and entrepreneurs scrambling to the space, and influencers too will be there in Santa Barbara in the first week in May, I uh, encourage you to go to Metabolic Health Summit. So we bring everybody together to talk about many of the different topics that we're discussing today. And uh, I know Verso will be there too, actually. So, I gotta order some more of that stuff. Yeah, so uh, ketonutrition.org, go to metabolicsummit.com uh, uh, and get more information about speakers. We have speakers from Harvard and Yale and Stanford speaking on many topics that we hit today, including uh, uh, basically we break it up into brain health, and cancer and then we have metabolic optimization and then we have uh, quite a few entrepreneurs who will be speaking on the space about the different technologies emerging that are helping this community whether it be ketone supplements or wearable devices you know there's going to be a lot of uh, interest in attendees there for that 